I just want to start where I, I'm most annoyed. And uh, oftentimes, where I'm most annoyed is uh, Tucker Carlson. Um, because, uh, interestingly enough, many people may or may not know that Tucker Carlson is an heir to the Swanson uh, TV dinner fortune. The processed Salisbury steak came, that came in frozen form that uh, Tom Cruise famously sucked in risky business because he didn't know that you had to heat them up, apparently. Um, or how long when they left him alone in the house, which is a great sign of maturity for your uh, your teenage son. If he can't, I mean, I think in general, it was, that, that movie's a, a, a cautionary tale to all kinds of folks, that risky business, although I would be lying if I didn't say it wasn't a sexual turning point for me. But um, uh, I'm on YouTube. Yeah, we're live on YouTube. Um, meanwhile, um, uh, it, I would, I would suggest to most parents, watch your kid either reheat or order some Postmates before you leave them alone in the house. Even if they're 15, 16 years old and you think that, you know, if they, if he, never mind. Anyways, so Tucker Carlson, uh, multi, multi-millionaire before he ever started working for Fox News. So why any of us would ever think he is any kind of relatable in terms of, uh, you know, the the general populace in any way. I mean, literally uh, an inherited trust fund baby telling us all how best to live. Now, I kind of don't mind uh, a little bit when the Bezoses and the Mark Cubans of the world and the Schwarzeneggers and Stallones and the Oprahs of the world who are first generation rich in their families. Cool. I'll listen to your uh, lectures on, you know, having a morning ritual, staying focused, building an empire all fucking day. But when it comes to Trump and, you know, who is a junior as well, he's Fred's son. Fred actually created the company. Tr Donald Trump and Donald Trump Jr. and Eric and Ivanka. Like, what the fuck can they tell us about anything? Because they were, I mean, they were literally born on third base and hired people to carry them across the plate uh, and, and all the way home. So Tucker himself, um, after you know, a couple of years ago having to take some time off because his head writer was writing um, anti-Semitic, racist, and, and sexist garbage on a Reddit thread under an assumed name, which clearly Tucker must have known about. On a show like that, you don't spend... You, the person you spend the most time with is your head writer. That's it. Of all the people. You might see your producer for the the primary meeting, but they're you're going to spend more draft time with your head writer. They're buddies. They knew it. They He knew about this guy doing this shit. No question. Um, that I mean, that ship has sailed. But this one, you'll see why <coughs> I am... Um, might have a, a bone to pick with it. I have not watched it, but this is, you know, 207,000 views on Fox News gives the his take on the escalating tensions between Ukraine and Russia on Tucker Carlson tonight. This is called China is the certain winner here. China's the certain winner here. China is going to benefit from us defending uh, Ukraine along with a bunch of other allies which he will, I wonder if he will drop any of the, you know, Belgium, France, Germany, England, um, any of those countries sending troops, supplies, weaponry, that kind of stuff to any of the surrounding countries or to Ukraine. I wonder if he'll just pretend that we're going it alone, a la, you know, George, you know, one, like we've, it's us and Guam, right? Um, I'm curious. Hmm. Oh my gosh, 11 subs. That's lovely. Here we go. Uh, thanks, Robert. Love you both. <laughs> he goes, hi, Hal and CSL. Love you both, my brothers. Thank you so much. And much love to CSL, for who who does the awful work of pre-watching these things so he knows they're worth, you know, because he knows it will irritate me. Like, at this point, this, half of this is like, this will really bug Hal. This will really drive him crazy. Because I haven't watched this. And so he's, <laughs> I just know it. Like, he's like, oh boy. Of all the stuff, because it's a never-ending supply. We are never going to run out of stupid shit from the right and the hyper-left to to just teabag all day long. We're just not. 
And some of this stuff, like, you're like, all right, how do we narrow it down? And some of it, CSL's narrowing is sometimes simply based on Hal's going to lose his shit when he watches this. <laughs> it's going to be more stupid people talking about just shit they know nothing about. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. All right, let's see. This is uh this is nine minutes long. This is Tucker Carlson. China is the certain winner here. I'm sure I won't have to put up uh, any Chinese economic data on the screen during this one, will I? No. Let's see. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. When permanent Washington pushes for war with Russia. Oh, by the way, uh, permanent Washington is uh, the dipshit way of saying deep state. He means deep state. That's what deep state is. He's just not saying it anymore because that phrase has jumped the shark. So permanent Washington, of which no one is because there are no permanent people so far. We all hope that we'll all live to be a thousand years old. But currently, everyone, every human being is temporary. That's right. Who benefits? We don't ask that question who? enough. The United States. Uh, who will benefit from war with Russia? And, oh, we, and he used this war machine graphic, too. He's recycling. Well, that's a good sign, I suppose. That's a step. You know, baby steps. Right, Tucker? He's, he's recycling now. Certainly doesn't benefit. That's obvious to anyone who thinks about it for a second. It's so glaringly obvious, in fact, that the people pushing this war immediately denounce you as a traitor if you point that out. Um, no, no, no. Um, no one's pushing for a war. That, it's the assertion that we're somehow pushing for a war because we want to help Ukraine defend itself against being completely overtaken by Russia, which is a gangster kleptocracy, which apparently you cannot dislodge your tongue from the butthole of the leader of, namely one Vladimir uh, sh always shook hands with Donald Trump in a way that Donald put his hand palm up Putin. They're betraying our country's interests, but somehow you're the one who's disloyal. You um, and by the way, why is that not our country's interest to shore up democracy in the world and not let authoritarian, hyper-violent, klepto, gangster uh, authoritarianism work its way across fucking Europe. Are you nuts? These borders are sacred. Our borders are racist. Shut up, Putin stooge. <laughs> uh, that, by the way, this goes back to um, uh, the whole idea that Russia amassing tanks tens of thousands of tanks and soldiers on the on on a border with Ukraine is the same as Haitians trying to come into the country because their president was assassinated and their country is effectively a failed state and they would like a job thank you very much it's the same thing you know what i mean and we do have a CBP. We just, I guess the problem is that Tucker doesn't understand why Europe isn't helping us with F-16s to strafe bomb our border the next time a bunch of Guatemalan women and their kids try to cross. It, you know, six of one, half dozen of another. Wait a second. Why is it dis... Jesus Christ. No wonder he's recycling. He had to go to... He had to upgrade to the Tenor account on Fiverr to get this one. What the fuck is this? This looks like a... <laughs> This looks like a back screen for Alex Jones's show. Holy shit. If you made a picture of this with Trump on it, half of Trump's fans would paste this, like would plaster this all over a fucking van. <laughs> like this is, this is a plus in Trump world. <laughs> Look at that. This missile's flying on that way. There's a tank with, is that got solar pans on, uh, panels on it? What kind of, what kind of woke military bullshit is this? There's a fighter plane, helicopters on a thing. There's a guy carrying some stuff. And there's a woman with her purse standing in the middle of a war field. And, 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 and I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> Either way, they're right in front of Biden. And his crotch is exploding. So, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, God, this is stupid. Loyal to side with Russia... Oh, look at this. Our fragile economy can't handle a war. Okay, first of all, fuck you. Yeah, we can. We can handle it better than anybody else's.
We, our our on the ground military is seven times the rest of the world's combined. Our our navy is eleven times the rest of the world combined. And in and in a nuclear hot war, n nobody wins and nobody has an economy anymore. So let's just not even converse about that. But fuck yeah, we can beat Russia in a ground war. With, like with one hand tied behind our back. Because in this case, it won't be one of these things where we're coming in like liberators and shit like that. There's a bunch of dead ground with soldiers on it. This is fucking stupid. <laughs> yes, Biden ate a huge spicy burrito and is farting on a tank. That's what's happening. Well, to side with Ukraine. They're both foreign countries that don't care anything about the United States. Well, that's not true, actually. Uh, Ukraine it deals with us about their natural gas reserves, which will eventually uh, help us with leverage it towards the European Union. And they know that, and we know that. If Russia gets hold of those gas reserves, it won't. And also, it will kill, you know, 40 million people. Kind of strange. It's all an absurd performance, but it's yeah, all they've Stephanie. got in the end. The fact is, Ukraine is strategically irrelevant to the United States. No. Is it? Yeah, well, let's let's be honest. To Tucker, uh, you know, Mr. Swanson Silver Spoon, which is, I guess, made out of is that tin foil or aluminum? I forget. Do they even come in the metal containers anymore? It's got to be it's got to be like cardboard and, uh, and, a, and a piece of cellophane over the top. Right. I haven't eaten one of those things in a long fucking time. Not above them, but I would get them from a different company. You understand, Tucker. It's a it's I'm canceling you rational person could defend a war with Russia over Ukraine? Uh, no, uh, we wouldn't uh, declare war with Russia over Ukraine, but we would, however, uh, side with Ukraine in their war against Russia. Because, uh, you know, ultimately, I, I got to tell you that um, short uh, the nukes flying um, on a material level, if Putin loses any face in this particular situation, then it really does speak of a shift in the geopolitics of that place. Oh yeah, in Conhell, it's just, in Conhell, it's, there's too much stuff, always. Um, it is plastic with cellophane now? Okay, all right, <laughs> Swanson comes with angioplasty, which is why he never worried about it, because I, uh, you know, born without a heart. And um, so, on the one hand, no, it isn't, shouldn't be any of our business. Like, we do have a reason to defend Ukraine against the encroachment of Russia because they'll just basically murder a bunch of Ukrainians. And it's a country that's a democracy that we have a relationship with. They tried to do it through uh, political maneuverings and Russian sock puppets. Now they want to do it by force because they're fucking up. And they have to do it now because the demographics of Russia, as I showed you on my morning show, point to a very bad situation for Russian ground troops in the future unless they can have, you know, buy a shit ton of Boston Dynamics, you know, knock off Boston Dynamics dogs, mount guns on them, you know, from China, and then I guess run them into other countries or some shit. Whatever that plan Nobody is. Nobody thinks a war like that would make America safer or stronger or more prosperous. Uh, yes, uh, yes, we do, actually. Because geopolitically over time, Russia controlling Ukraine, Lithuania, Kazakhstan, and all these countries and basically reforming the USSR uh, would give them a bunch of resources and access to a lot of different um, borders in Europe that we are friends with because of that very thing. And if it was, if we were back to Gorbachev's era, if they were trying to like, hey, let's fold these guys back into Russia in general because we want to be, you know, create a support structure, we'd be suspicious of it, but not worried. Because they were, the intention at that time seemed to be at least that there was going to be a functional government in Russia, that it would be a, a country for real. Now, it's basically a volcano layer. It just happens to have a lot of land mass. Take a look at our economy recently. Day yes, yes, it's kicking everyone else's ass. The whole world is reeling from, from COVID and the supply chain crisis from it. And yet America is rock fucking solid compared to everybody else. It is. Even the stock market dropped. Like everybody's like, buy the dip, buy the dip. Fucking hell levels of inflation a workforce in disarray wildly yeah a workforce in disarray why is it in disarray because there are more jobs than people that's that's the disarray you're looking for swings in financial markets in case you haven't noticed
it's wild swings in financial markets, which I'm sure we're all worried about. Yes, day traders got a bad dose of like fentanyl and coke mix together and it they're falling asleep on their keyboards and triggering auto buys of stuff. Will joining a conflict in Eastern Europe fix any of that? Come on. Well, it has nothing to do with any of it. What do you mean fix it? Dude, I, I, I recognize uh, this person needs CPR and I'm the only person around to do it, but I'm going to be late for work. <laughs> Will your boss be okay with you getting the work? I think so. All right, all right, then what the fuck? Well, I'm not sure. You work somewhere that if you told someone you stopped to give someone CPR so they wouldn't die, they would fire you? Yeah. And you want to keep working there? Why? <laughs> of course not. It'll make it worse. If the neocons aren't restrained and soon, Americans are going to be a lot poorer. So but, really? We are? Yeah, oh, because of the shit we've already sent to Ukraine? By the way, uh, you, you do know there are foreign troops uh, there already. Hold on one second. Um, I want to say... Troops to Ukraine. Um, yeah, so we have 8,500 troops on high alert in the in, in the Baltic states. Biden is uh, as U.S. puts about there. You go. This is our. This is what we're doing, right? Oh, but that's uh, so here we go. Yeah. So Biden meets with Europeans about Ukraine as U.S. puts 8,500 troops on heightened alert to be sent to the region. Notice it says to region, not to Ukraine. They're going to be sent to the Baltics, but that's another thing entirely. And basically so that we can supply shit and send drones and crap like that without being in the hot zone. We're not going anywhere near there. Um, and then, uh, let's see. News. This will be... <laughs> I just saw that NATO sent, yeah. <clears throat> Meanwhile, NATO sends ships, jet fighters to Eastern Europe amid standoff with Russia. U.S. confers with European allies, puts thousands of troops on standby to potentially deploy near, near Russia. And this is really just to cut off supply stuff um, through blockades and other shit. Um, but, I mean, this is a game of risk. No, there's none of this, though. Like, these guys... Like these folks, and I don't even know where the fuck that is. Anybody know where that tank is? Is that a, supposed to be a Russian tank? Are we? Uh, is he showing Russian shit? And some of our, sh I don't know, whatever. Doing this, that's a complex question. Hubris, mm -hmm. stupidity, the damaged psychological makeup of our leaders, massive lobbying campaigns by Ukraine. Uh, a concern for democracy and an alliance uh, in NATO that we respect and work in conjunction with and that as much as Trump tried to shut it down, we still give a shit. And one of the reasons that Biden got elected was because of his firm support for NATO. Politicians and American defense contractors, all of those factors play a role in this. No tragedy has a single cause. But what's not at all complicated. That's true. There are probably three or four different people involved in your haircut. Benefits from our conflict with Russia. China benefits, period. The China all right, sure. Yeah. China benefits. Period. How so? Government is the only certain winner here. We can give you many examples to illustrate this, but consider the latest economic sanctions the White House has proposed against Russia. The mm -hmm. Biden administration may use something called the foreign direct product. Also, by the way, this is a reused graphic. To cut off Russia's supply of semiconductors made with American technology. Mm -hmm. This would, in the hopeful assessment of the Washington Post, quote, potentially deprive Russian citizens of some smartphones, tablets, and video game consoles. So depriving Russian citizens is good, we're told, because Russian citizens are bad. Okay. No, no, that, that would put pressure on, they're denied those things because they have to play nice with the world to get them. And if they're just operating on a war footing, why the fuck should the rest of the world be helping them get shit they don't make delivered to them? Um, that, that, you know, while the people are good, they, it, it increases pressure on the leadership because the leadership is making these decisions. 
what are the long-term effects on us? Russians are still going to have smartphones. They'll just get their components somewhere else, meaning from China. Uh, no. And if they do, they'll be crap knockoffs. I mean, they're cheaper now. The Russians don't make that much money. Why don't the Russians all use Chinese smartphones? They share a border. Belt Road initiatives happen in Tuck. Explain that. They're, uh, they're totally cheap, comparatively. Bring them on over, I'm sure. Ask every Russian how well their cell phone works, which is... Mm -hmm, compared to an American-made or European-made model, or a South Korean one in particular. And then go, you can have uh, that, or you can have a Chinese model, <laughs> please. Chinese have already pledged to help, and they have every incentive to make good on that promise. In other words, the Biden administration will have succeeded in continuing to drive our two main global rivals closer to a permanent alliance with one another. Yeah, except that whole uh, overfishing Russian waters by the Chinese and their, their uh, co-desire to empty the land of each other's people and get to their resources. Chinese mainly getting the natural gas and oil from Russia and uh, Russia getting coal and, and arable, arable ground. How does that help America? Well, it doesn't. Over time, it's... Well, uh, it's also a straw man and a false argument. Because the assumption that they're going to get together is, uh, for the record, fucking ridiculous. Dangerous, and not just militarily. The only reason the U.S. government can enforce international sanctions is because the U.S. dollar is the world's reserve currency. No, the other reason is because is we patrol the shipping lanes. Now, Tucker may or may not know this. I don't doubt that he has blind spots in his intellect, but I also think he might willfully ignore this fact that the United States patrols all of the waters of the world. And if we don't, or we act as a stoplight instead of a green light, that fucks with their economy. That's where the sanctions are coming from. The same thing is, is why China's freaking, about, uh, freaking out about the Indo-Pacific region and Taiwan. Because they want to cut off anyone. They, it's effectively a modern version of piracy. They want to make sure that Taiwan, Japan, South Korea, and Australia, and India can't interact without their permission. Right now, we make sure they can. Because we have the long-range boats, we have the protection. Right, right now, China wants to move to a situation where they both patrol the waters of the Indo-Pacific and engage in the majority of the piracy. So... Talk about, like, giving with one hand and taking with the other. But none of this, like, like, uh, hold on. Let me, uh, let's see. Uh, Russians fire on Chinese fishing. Let's see if I can find the article I was looking at before. Yeah. This has been going on forever. This, uh, let me let me find a newer one, just because the first one that came up. Let's see, news. Mm -hmm. <coughs> one moment, please. Hold on. Okay, that's the Philippines. Um, well, we'll go back to here. Hold on. All right. Yeah, um, whoops, hold on. Here we go. Let's see this part, right? I'll just do it here. Um, 2009, there's a two-year-old Lord begins to rush to... And I should say, okay, hold on. This is, uh, this is back in 2012. I can't find the article I have written now, but it, they, this has happened a bunch of times. So this is the primary one that keeps coming up. I don't know why it won't refresh, but, uh, shots fired as Russia detains Chinese fishing ships. Russian Coast Guard seized two Chinese vessels and detained 36 fishermen Thurs uh, on Tuesday. Shots were fired on one vessel, which was eventually rammed by a Russian ship. This happens all the time. 
the Chinese need more food uh, than the Russians are willing to give away. They're not... Ask India what a great trade partner China is. They share a border too. Russia and China don't like this, obviously. So let's say they convinced other global powers that the U.S. government was abusing its monopoly on monetary control. If they do it to us, they might do it to you, they would say. And then other countries decided to... And other si countries go, let's see. Your economy is shit and your money isn't worth anything. But the United States currency is stable and all my other trading partners but you use it and given a choice, fuck off. Drop the U.S. dollar in favor of a new currency. Where would that leave us? Um, we, we, would, we would have a stable economy separate from the worst warlords in the history of the world, in the modern era anyways, um, playing, like, having a circle jerk over dwindling resources. <laughs> Suddenly the United States would no longer be able to run an economy based on debt. We would be impoverished immediately overnight. No, we wouldn't. He said this like four times. This is, God, I'm not wrong about this, right? Every time we see Tucker, he says we would be impoverished overnight. By the way, what, what kind of bullshit, brittle idea does he have about the, the, the nation he lives in? Has no one in Washington thought of this? Yes, they, they all, there's somebody's job it is to think of it. And he turns it in. They go, yeah, this will never happen. Fuck it. Apparently not imposing tough new sanctions every few months feeds their moral vanity. It makes them feel like good people. What for Well, they are because the resources that they're sanctioning, the people they're sanctioning specifically aren't the Russian people, but the oligarchs themselves who are bleeding Russia dry. Again, that dude has a salary of 140,000 US a year, and yet he's worth $200 billion, Tucker. Must be that can-do bootstrap attitude they taught him in the KGB, right? Meanwhile, this guy is gearing up to make himself leader for life so that no one can even replace him. Even if the party itself wants to. The fuck is that? Like, you already don't have a democracy, but even the ruling class that gets to pick who runs the goddamn country, they can't change? You just in there? And we're supposed to go, oh, shit. These guys know how to run a country. That's, yeah, he's an emperor. He's not a fucking, he's not a president. He's technically a, the chairman. I don't know why people call him president. Stop it. Any more than fucking Putin is a president. You aren't, you, you aren't president. With, like, as bad as people on the right think that, you know, you know, Trump is going to get some sort of financial problems or has legal bills because he's fighting the, 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 the bed he shit in as he wallows around in it. Is there, is there, he, this guy's opposition got sprayed in the face with a chemical that turned him green, was poisoned, flew to Berlin or he would have died. And then they arrested him for coming back. And, and the, he put him in jail so he doesn't have a run again. Like, for fuck's sake. The, I mean, and these guys would get on like a house on fire. They are. Both parties, by the way, participate in this. Preening about... Uh, no, they don't. Fuck off. ...on television is a lot easier than improving the lives of people in your own country. Well, you can do both at the same time, and one does not directly conflict with the other. Why would you assume so? But they do. Here's... Uh-oh. Uh, uh, now I can't say anything. He's going to attack Joni Ernst. And she's all right. She, she's Senator Republican. Joni Ernst of Iowa telling you that protecting you. Excuse me, uh, Tucker. Um, as we all know from Trump, it is not pronounced Iowa. It's pronounced For Iowa values. Yeah, it's, it's For Iowa values. You have to take a shit as you're saying Iowa. For Iowa values. Right. In sacred borders is much more important than, say, saving Americans in Des Moines from overdosing on drugs. Watch. <laughs> yes, it's this. It's a. She doesn't care about. Uh, she can only follow one thing. She's like a cat with a laser pointer. 
So we do need to go ahead and impose sanctions on Russia now. We need to show them that we mean business and we will be there for Ukraine should they invade. Certainly we need to make sure that any defensive aid is in the hands of the Ukrainians as well as as much lethal aid as we can provide at this time. Those are our leaders. Totally ignorant. <laughs> totally ignorant about the... A uh, topic they're being asked about that you edited out shit in between because you only took two sentences that she said. So she's ignorant. We're just to assume, right? That, that there's probably in those gaps before she was asked the question, her response to the initial question, the middle of those, so whatever she said in between those two sentences and everything afterwards is uh, they're just, just p spackle in some ignorance there. Just assume that, that, that it was equally as ignorant. And also, um, how so? Just reading the script. It's nice to hear someone... Um, Secular Way says, there should not be one homeless person in America, and if they have a drug problem, we need to put more money into mental health care and rehabilitation. Uh, Secular, we do not have the right in this country to forcibly extract people um, in public and to forcibly house them. So you will never get to zero homeless, ever. You won't. Unless you're saying imprison the homeless, which I have to say I'm against. Press Corps, because it's their job, ask the obvious follow-up, which would be, why exactly, Senator Ernst, do you believe it's so vital to send more lethal aid to Ukraine and to, quote, go ahead and impose more sanctions on Russia? Why? How would she answer that question? We'll never know how she'd answer because no one in the media would ever ask her. Well, uh, obviously you would, but your show's too stupid, so she won't come on. You know, I guess I just hoisted by your own petard again, Tucker. You know, if you had an actual show that had guests on it that did more than just uh, run their apology tour, because that's really what Tucker's for on Fox right now, is he brings on Candace Owens for a seven-minute uh, seven minute segment and only lets her talk for three before going to commercial, because that's, that's as long... Uh, of a black person talking as he can take, apparently. <laughs> Even when they're allegedly on his side. And uh, and then, you know, the Matt Gates is the world and everybody else, they get to come on and uh, cover their ass. It's a CYA show. Reporters are the most bovine of the herd animals. If the other kids say it's a good idea, they assume that it is. Journalists feel that way about everything, but especially about armed conflict. The longest war... We'll, we'll know. I mean, unless you're counting, like, the Afghanistan war, which you apparently believe we should still be in. American history just ended this fall when we left Afghanistan. The new consensus in Washington is, we need another war. Now. And that it, it, is it? Oh, that's why, I see. So that's why we paid Russia to amass troops on the Ukrainian border. I, You know what I mean? Like, I talk about, like, ninth-level Spock chess. Man. Those CIA guys are amazing. How'd they manage to do it? Do you think they have a chip in Putin's head that makes him do this? Or do you think maybe he watches a lot of U.S. media and you guys non-fucking stop are talking about how weak Biden is for about six months and he's like, maybe there's something to this. Maybe this is the time. It was especially prevalent in TV news. Watch this teleprompter jockey try to push our Russia-hating secretary as, uh, by the way, uh, <clears throat> Tucker Carlson is reading from a teleprompter right now. You can see as his eyes chase the words as they go up in front of him. I am speaking extemporaneously. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I don't even pre-watch these fucking clips. I don't have to. <laughs> State into hating Russia even more. We are proceeding on both paths at the same time. We'll be ready either way. The choice is Vladimir Putin's. But, but what are you negotiating? If Russia's demands are non-starters, I mean, President Biden has already said Ukraine's not going to join NATO anytime soon. Mm -hmm. You've made this offer of reciprocal military exercises. What's left to talk about? What's left to... Yeah, what? so it's the breakdown in talks is Blinken's fault, and the news is going, well, what? how can you keep having... Because con they are continuing to have conversations. That's why she's asking. There was just a report yesterday that that the Russians have said we would like to continue talking. And if there's a non-starter there, then what are you talking about? Well, part of it might be just delay on the R Russians' part. 
But since we're the ones who don't want to get into a hot war, and the responsibility for that is largely on us, or or I suppose uh, in Tucker's parlance, allowing Russia to roll over the Ukrainian people because fuck them uh, is an option. Uh, the the side that actually gives a shit about what they're fighting about is the one that has to stay at the table. Think about too much diplomacy, Mr. Secretary, not enough killing. Is, is that what you took away from it? Oh, that's right. You're a sap. I, I forgot. That's her position, apparently. Max Boot of the Washington Post fervently agrees with this. I At like this point, wood. every project in Max Boot's life has collapsed into disaster, from his personal affairs to the war in Iraq, which he... <laughs> Consensus in D.C. We need another conflict ASAP. That, that doesn't seem to be the case. Otherwise, why would we be negotiating? If that was the consensus, the fuck are we talking about? Why is Blinken making the argument? If the consensus is that, I mean, Beltway Media notwithstanding in that highly tightly edited clip, you again showed that we're supposed to assume idiocy on the outers of and ignore the entire conversation. Um, what, the, what the fuck are we negotiating for then? If all we want is a, is a conflict, why have we been delaying this? Why don't we just fucking play risk, push some fucking barriers and some drones and some uh, long-range uh, cannons up near the border and fire away? ...endlessly. Having come to middle age, Max Boot is unequivocally a failure. But he's looking... By the way, no one knows when middle age is because no one knows when they're going to die. And anybody who thinks they're in middle age is usually very arrogant. One last war to redeem it all. He's thinking conflict with nuclear-armed Russia could be that war. Watch. We should be arming the Ukrainians like crazy. Uh, we should be preparing for a guerrilla warfare uh, if the Russians go in. And I think the most important thing we, we can do right now is to lay out a menu of sanctions so that Putin knows exactly what's going to happen to him if he goes over the line. Because right now, with these vague threats, he can be left with the feeling, well, Maybe the U.S. and the, and the Europeans, maybe we're not, we're not really going to do anything. Again, you have to ask yourself, why is it more, quote, patriotic to take one? Also, uh, we're to assume that there, there are four people in that shot. We're to assume the other three were all in on, fuck yeah, man. It's fucking, like, if they don't let us make Ukraine a NATO country, nukes away, man. The missiles are away, hallelujah. Countryside, then the other countryside. We have no obligation to defend any country, either one of these countries, neither. Yeah, but they affect uh, energy costs in Europe, which will affect our economy over here. I mean, if you want to get really crass about it, that would be the baseline. I mean, obviously, you don't give a fuck about democracy. Obviously, you don't care about the people who are going to get killed that didn't ask for it. I mean, this, this is a dude who is like, you know. In any African conflict, like the, his response will always be cross your hands and count the dead because there's fewer of those people on earth. In this particular instance, he's just genuinely siding with, with Vladimir Putin. American, neither one has the same interests as we do. Why is it wrong to support one and not the other? What's wrong is to support either one of them. Their interests are not the same as ours. They're very. Well, yeah, one's a democracy and the other one isn't. The other one's a gangster, gangster kleptocracy that sprays poison in the faces of, of dissidents in the middle of parks in Berlin. Front. Max Boot doesn't care. Arm the Ukrainians! Prepare for guerrilla warfare! Only... By the way, uh, so far, is Max a conservative? I don't, I don't read his stuff, so... Um... So far, Joni Ernst and Max Boot, again, why the fuck do I give a fuck? <laughs> and completely insulated from the consequences of his bloodlust could talk like that. There will always be another think tank job for Max Boot and people like Max Boot. But what's Politico's excuse? The fashionably liberal political blog has been pushing for war in Ukraine for months now. What? Oh, yeah. They've been, they've been pushing for war. This buffoon will face no consequences. I'm not sure who that Chiron is for, Tucker. What's in it for them? Well, let's see. A few days ago, Politico published this terrifying headline, quote, Saki, 
Russia could at any point launch an attack in Ukraine. Yeah, that was that was the assessment of the State Department. They asked her about it. That's what they genuinely believe. That's why it's a quote. How Politico didn't make that up. The fuck's wrong with you? So, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Uh, yes. uh, Russia could attack Ukraine. <laughs> Let's see if this one. Let's see if I can do it. Under five minutes. Uh, okay. Oops. I keep hitting the. See if they, uh, let's see. Where is it? Uh, 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 uh. Biden predicts Putin will advance in Ukraine. He has to do something. Downplayed the prospects of Ukraine joining NATO, saying it won't happen in the near term. President Biden said, well, let's see if the stock is. I'm not sure he uh, has. He's certain what he's going to do. My guess is he will move in. He has to do something. Um, uh, depends on what he does. The one thing, it's a minor incursion. We have to end up fighting uh, about what to do, not et cetera, meaning cyber incursion. But, <coughs> but never mind. <coughs> um, let's see. He said it would be a disaster. Russia made it clear if any Russian forces move across the Ukrainian border, it's a renewed invasion. It will be a swift, severe, and united response from the United States and our allies. President Biden also uh, knows from long experience the Russians have extensive playbook of aggressive, short uh, of military aggression, short of military action, including cyber attacks, paramilitary tactics. He affirmed today that uh, those acts of Russian aggression will be met with decisive reciprocal and united response. Hello. I am friends with... This is my Swanson wine. Um, let's see. If they actually do it with the cable message, da, 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 Biden uh, seemed to reassure Russia downplaying the possibility of Ukraine joining NATO in the near term. Again, that was the negotiation. Putin has, uh, has described the possibility of Ukraine joining NATO in the alliance, deploying we weapons there as a red line for Moscow. Um, sorry, dude, outside your borders. Uh, the Kremlin demanded Washington and its allies making a blind, uh, binding pledge excluding NATO. They're not going to do that. Um, let's see. Last week, Russian diplomats met with officials from the United States and NATO. Okay. This is the Fox. This is the Fox title. He has to do something. Right. Again, that's just a quote from Saki. So what? The piece goes on to promise that, quote, experts and policymakers are now preparing for a range of escalatory measures. Yes, they are. That doesn't mean that's going to happen. And that and those are about the sanctions, not about war. Well, that sounds scary. We Well, that sounds scary. Well, that's cuz everything scares you. Um, okay, hold on. Politico uh Saki um what was the title of that stupid thing? Hold on. Russia. Okay, there you go. Starkey. Mm -hmm. Quit it. I'm typing. Russia could. There we go. Um, this is the article he, he cites. Uh, there you go. Saki. Russia could at any point launch an attack on Ukraine. Um, you don't have to be the insider to realize just how worried the Biden administration is about uh, Russia invading Ukraine again on Tuesday. Three top officials came out and said it. We're now at a stage where Russia could at any point launch an attack in Ukraine. Um, and said during our daily, uh, daily press briefing, Moscow's recent military moves signaled to the U.S. that the uh, Russia is looking at Ukraine in an aggressive way. Said the U.S. ambassador to the U U.N. The Washington uh, Post, John Capehart, in an interview this morning, and Chief Pentagon spokesperson John Kirby added to his own press that there's no sign, no indication the Russians are willing to de-escalate. These comments worried a House Republican staffer. We're staring down in, in Afghanistan and Europe type of event with thousands dead, refugee floodgates open, U.S. credibility gutted. It's going to be horrible to watch. Um, 
uh, my problem isn't with the severity of what it would mean if the Russians invaded Ukraine and we had to answer to it, because it is going to be horrible. But an Afghanistan in Europe type of event? Uh, event? The fuck? Ukraine's already a functioning democracy. They just got on their feet after being having Russian sock puppets run the fucking place. Openly alarmist rhetoric from the administration comes. Oh, that, really, Politico? You're referring to it as openly alarmist? Um, uh, you're, I, I think Tucker would agree with you in this. From the administration comes after talks between Russia and the United States and its allies as we fail to stop the momentum towards war. We can now say that we're staying on different tracks and totally different tracks. This is not good. Uh, Kremlin spokesperson, uh, spokesperson Dmitry Peskov told CNN's Fareed Zakaria also follows intelligence released by the Biden administration Friday that a renewed incursion could start between mid-January and mid-February. We at NATSEC Daily are no calendar experts, but we're pretty confident stating January 18th falls within that time frame. It, let's see. It's still unclear if it's uh, a main decision. I want to find that part where it says experts are uh, developing, but uh, Russians have every indication no plan to de-escalate. Blah, blah, blah. We saw that part of it. Uh, joint, uh, okay. DC counters choose. Do countries choose NATO? Told Parliament Monday the many nations have joined in the alliance because of the study. Rhetorical flourish. The statement also mass important. Clearly, so no membership is decision of 30. Uh, okay. Call with Lavrov. Blinken said, We stand by our firm commitment to include NATO allies and European partners, including Ukraine, and talks about our collective security. Um, open door, blah, blah, blah. U.S. sanctioned pro Russian separatists. The administration is readying sanctions against pro-Russian separatists in Ukraine, which will be announced while Blinken is in Europe this week. The pending sanctions, which will freeze the assets of at least four individuals, could be announced as early as Thursday. So I guess they're already doing what everyone said they should be doing. They'd be the latest in a string of actions under the uh, executive order signed by President Biden last April that would aim to punish individuals associated with Russia's foreign aggression. Wall Street Journal's Vivian K. It's really places. Yeah. Okay. Where Where is this... Uh, experts are building some sort of thing. I mean, if it's a whole new article, uh huh. Oh, here we go. <sighs> Russia's given every indication there's no plan to de-escalate in any meaningful way, especially given their public statements regarding the talks last week being a failure. It seems like experts and poly policymakers are now preparing for a range of ex e escalatory measures. I'm sorry, what? What do, you, what do you notice about this quote? What what part what part is missing? Holy fuck, this is lazy. Do you think anybody like but me rolls up uh, rolls back on this shit? Honest to God, I feel like I'm the only person who goes and looks at the third paragraph of every article and checks and sees if the narrative of the uh, of the uh, headline matches the actual content of the goddamn thing. But how many times on Fox News, especially on Tucker and especially on Hannity, have we rolled back when they put a quote on fucking screen and they? intentionally, I mean, there's a lot of shit in here you could grab the whole thing and create a narrative around. That's just the reality of a complete sentence. But the fucking fact that this, that said Rachel Rizzo, a fellow at the Center for New American Security, which is like, um, A, a matter of opinion, not in, you know, this isn't somebody in the administration. It, it seems like Experts and policymakers are now preparing for a range of escalatory measures. It does it seem like that because it doesn't say like it, it doesn't seem like they added the it seems like part to this whole fucking thing. It seems like they shaved off the it seems like part so that the are now preparing part sounds extra fucking scary so that that this dipshit can say sounds kind of scary. Oh God. Oh my lord. Clutch the pearls. It's scary. Look at this shit. Watch him do it. Ukraine. Watch him do it. The piece goes on to promise that, quote, experts and... The, whoa, 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 whoa. The piece goes on to promise. It's even worse. Point, launch an attack in Ukraine. The piece Listen goes to on to promise that, quote... To promise that, to promise that, it seems like that. 
That's not a promise. Fucking hell. Experts and policymakers are now preparing for a range of es Holy shit. So uh, we're not even in the part where he just shaved it off to make it seem that way. They, like they took off, it seems like he goes on to promise. That is a fucking lie. It's like an easily verifiable lie. Now, you will notice why, even though he lists Politico up there and, and puts this thing up in quotes and it eats up most of the screen on this fucking thing, there is no date and article and writer credit. That is the stark difference between CNN and MSNBC. As whatever you think about either of those, because I know there's some trolls going, but, 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 fuck off. They put that up there so you can check the article yourself. This dickhead is intentionally shaving off those details lest you Google it. And then he exaggerates the fucking lie. Like, it's bad enough they shaved that off, but goes on to promise? Good Lord. Tory measures. Well, that sounds scary. Well, that sounds scary. If you remove all context and create a context that doesn't exist, that sounds fucking scary. My goodness. I, I'm so easily frightened by, by misreported uh, quotes. Or send billions more in military hardware to Ukraine right away. Beneath the headline, you learn why Politico's interested because the story is, quote, like Saki Rashika presented by Lockheed Martin. Is that, is it sent in there? Let's say, hold on. National Security Daily. Da -da -da. The headline is what? All right, I'm looking at it. Hold on. What does he say? Presented by Lockheed Martin. Aha. In other words, hold on. This is the actual article. This is the top of the page. National Security Daily from the sit room, E ring, inside scoop on defense, national security, and foreign policy. Get the national security. Done. Sign up. Saki. Russia could at any point launch an attack on Ukraine by Alexander Ward, uh, Quint Forgey. Uh, this is the date, time they uploaded it. They updated it again later that day. White House press area with help from Phelim Kine and Daniel Lipman. Is it at the bottom of the article that it says presented by Lockheed Martin? Or did, or did, is that just what kind of ads show up when you don't scrub your fucking, uh, your stock information from, from the, uh, cookies on your browser? It's okay. Like, end of this story. Join Friday to hear from Governor's Okay. And then it goes to the inbox. It's a different story altogether. I do not. If anybody kn knows where that shit is supposedly listed, top the top of the page. This is uh, X2 technology gives you the edge. Like it's an ad. They're running ads because it's the National Security Daily. They don't pfft, fucking hell. This is it's a click through ad. Cuz they want people to fucking buy stock. That's not presented by. They just they advertise whatever the National Security Daily Good Lord. Along with a bunch of other people. Defense contractors think it is high time to spend much more on defense contracting in Ukraine. Politico is happy to make their case in exchange for money. Yeah, except uh, Lockheed Martin isn't the kind of shit we're going to be sending over there. Over at the Washington Post, you may have seen this op-ed with this headline, quote, Biden must show that the United States stands ready to support you. Oh, an op-ed? Michael Vickers. Let's see. Hold on. Washington Post. Michael. Whoops. Vickers. Whoops. Yeah, here we go. This is it. 
uh, opinion. I mean, that word does kind of stand out. It's from global opinions, even. It's in their global opinions thing. So globalists think George Soros, think Super Jew. Right. Biden must show that the U.S. stands ready to support Ukraine militarily if possible. Say no to Putin. A demonstrator holds a sign at a rally in Ukraine uh, in Kiev. Michael Vickers, former Special Forces officer and CIA operations officer, serves as Assistant Direct, De uh, Secretary of Defense for Special Operations. Low intensity combat and interdependent capabilities, 2007 to 2011. Under Secretary for Defense for Intelligence, 2011 to 2015. Um, yeah, it's an it's an opinion piece. Uh, let's see. Is there? Wait, what do you think? Okay, hold on. Should we go to? Let's go to global opinions. Um, here's one that says <clears throat> Biden's ready to deploy sanctions against Russia, but will the bite live up to the bark? Um, why I'm opposed to Ilhan Omar's bill against Islamophobia. Cruise ships and everyone more dangerous for workers. Um, I want to educate Afghan freedom fighters not with rifles. Will the world support us? Andrew Zimmerman traveled the world for food. Now he takes a, uh, on a new challenge. Cut his thing. U.S. can't afford to leave Ukraine and Europe at Putin's mercy. Ma there's Max Boots' article he's talking about. On sanctions against Russia, the West's best policy is to keep its powder dry. This is the editorial board arguing sort of the opposite. Um, Biden should resist. Look, here's why didn't you cite this one? This is also in the opinion page of the, of the Washington Post. You didn't, you didn't put this in there? It's even got a, you know, a, a well-chosen picture to make it look like he doesn't know who he's talking to. Branko Marcetic is a staff writer at Jacobin Magazine and the author of Yesterday's Man, The Case Against Joe Biden. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked that, uh, that Tucker wouldn't do that. Jacobin is hot toilet paper, but still. <laughs> Militarily, if necessary. Now, that piece was written by a man called Michael Vickers. Who's Michael Vickers? Well, among other things, Michael Vickers sits on the board of the weapons contractor BAE Systems. Now, that would seem relevant because war with Russia would be, potentially in any case, high. Gee, I wonder if they say that. It says, Denver took difference off the table, declaring that escalation of dominance, more than 100,000 things. Well, let's see what BAE does first, then we'll get into it. Be profitable for BAE systems. But somehow the Washington Post didn't bother to tell readers about this. It remained undisclosed. So how does this look from across the world? Well, the Chinese must be watching this happen with their jaws open, completely delighted. They can't believe their good fortune. They watch as the entire political leadership class of the United States runs at full speed in the wrong direction away from Asia, which is so clearly the future, and toward the murky past on the fringes of Eastern Europe. Ukraine, Russia! And the Chinese must be wondering, how could these people be so stupid and so self-destructive? Hey, Sean Hannity wait, here. Hey, hold, oh, wait, no, oh, no, 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 no. You don't get to bail out like that, dumb fuck. You, you don't get to make the... China's the certain winner here. And then just at the end, tag on this bullshit? Wondering, how could these people be so stupid and so self-destructive? Hey, Sean... That's, that's it? Just because we're, we're dealing with the Ukraine-Russia conflict currently? That suddenly pantses us in front of... And by the way, staying in Afghanistan all these years didn't? The fuck are you talking about? Effectively alone, by the way, we had a couple of supporters there in France and, and Great Britain, but even they had like, you know, dozens of troops and, and uh, you know, a, a hundred pieces of gear each. And, and somehow this is... Di All right, anyway. It, like, it's so stupid. Like, <laughs> and how is this... Uh, well, I mean, I can't get it even, I don't even have time to get in to why that wasn't even a conversation because it's, there's no, assert, there's an assertion there, but, and an implementate, you know, he makes an assertion without any meat on the bone. 